The Windows 10 May 2019 update is now available, but with a phased rollout in progress, you may be waiting some time to receive it. Once again, we're jumping the queue and installing right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. In a recent video, we installed the May 2019 update ahead of its general release. That video was published in April 2019 and at that time we needed to join the Windows Insider program in order to obtain the update. As Microsoft have now released the update more widely, the task of updating is greatly simplified. For some users, updating is simply a matter of clicking on the start button, then typing update and running Windows Update before clicking check for updates at the Windows Update screen. Whilst this is by far the simplest update method, it's dependent upon the update being made available to you by Microsoft, which isn't necessarily guaranteed, as the rollout is phased and you may be waiting some time, potentially months, for your turn to come around. We're not big fans of waiting, and the method to manually update is incredibly straightforward. If you don't have success with this method, keep watching, as later we'll use a disk image to perform the update, and in a separate tutorial, we use that same disk image to perform a clean installation of the May update. Prior to performing this, or indeed any other update, we recommend reviewing our backup tutorial series, in which we perform both full system image and selective file and folder backups, and, given that Windows updates have been reported to have deleted files, a safety first approach is recommended. Having performed our backup and checked that Windows Update will not simply deliver the update to us, we start our browser, navigating to the Windows 10 download page shown on screen now and in the written description accompanying this video. Whilst we're using the GB site here in Great Britain, this can easily be swapped out to US for America and localised to other territories with language region combinations. We click the Update Now button. With Microsoft Edge as our browser, we select the option to run immediately following the download. Following an automatic security scan, user account control seeks confirmation of our intention to install, which we provide. The update assistant now runs, and we begin by clicking the large update now button. We also close down the background web page purely to focus upon our installation. A compatibility check is briefly performed. If you are short on disk space, you may wish to review our tutorial on freeing up disk space. If you are low on memory, you will require a hardware upgrade namely the installation of physical RAM, and if you fail the CPU test, you effectively cannot install this update on this machine at this time, and likely forever. Note that a timer will already be running on the commencement of the download, which you can shorten by clicking next. The download phase begins, and will take some time on all but the very fastest of connections. You may wish to take a break at this point, although you also have the option to continue using the machine for unrelated tasks. Upon completion, there follows a verification stage, which again requires no input from us. A third phase of processing takes place before the update is declared to be ready. A countdown begins, which will lead to an automatic restart in 30 minutes, which we can again preempt by clicking Restart Now. Although note that any documents opened in the background should be saved, as the machine will perform an immediate restart. We are advised that we will be signed out at restart, which commences thereafter. There now follows a lengthy phase of working on updates, with the percentage counter acting as our guide. Again, taking a break is recommended as the process is entirely automated. During this phase of the installation, there will be multiple restarts, until we are advised that 100% completion has been reached. At this point, we are required to log in, unless we've enabled NetPLWiz for automated login as per our tutorial video. Upon login, we are now returned immediately to our desktop, as a final installation phase takes place. The phase is dominated by a few concise words of encouragement from Microsoft, and we are eventually teased that we are almost there, before we are met with a welcome page, which we click to clear, and a thank you message, which we also exit. We now have our first sighting of the version 1903 desktop. We can safely delete the update assistant, and we are now free to explore all the features of the new update, and we'd encourage you to check out some of our videos exploring these features. At the beginning of the video, we mentioned an alternative method. This is appropriate if you have more than one machine to update, as it will save download time and reduce bandwidth when used with multiple machines. It can also be tried if our first method fails for any reason. We return to the Windows download page mentioned earlier, and this time we download the media creation tool. We click to run it, and as before, we confirm to user account control that this was deliberate. The Windows logo briefly appears, and we are advised that a few things are being readied. 
We close the open browser window to focus on the installer, accepting the mandatory license terms. The choice to upgrade this PC essentially takes us on the journey we have already witnessed, so we select the option to create installation media. We proceed to the Language, Architecture and Edition screen, where unticking the recommended option gives us flexibility over our installation choices. We can select from International English variants, as well as other languages, and we can select 32-bit or 64-bit architecture, or indeed both. Although 32-bit machines are very much in decline, this affords us the greatest future flexibility at the expense of a longer download and larger file size. Next, we can immediately create a flash drive, which may be your preference, or we can create an ISO file. We choose the latter, again for flexibility. The creation of a single file means we can run the file from this PC, copy it to another machine, write it to a bootable USB stick, or indeed burn it to disk. We need to specify a location where the completed ISO file will be saved, and the choice is entirely arbitrary. We select our downloads folder. As we can amass a large collection of similar ISO files, we give this one a descriptive name. The downloading phase begins, and takes a short while to complete. After that, the download verifies, and the media is created. We have the option to burn to disk, but this is not our intention, so we simply click finish to exit the media creation phase. Here is the output of the process, a single ISO file with a name of our choosing, located in our downloads folder. We can use this file like any other, copying and pasting it freely, and deploy it to update this, or any other PC. Let's see how that works. Clicking on the file mounts it as though it were a CD or DVD contained within an optical drive. It assumes a drive letter, in this instance E, and operates as a read-only drive, much like a physical disk would. The virtual disk opens to reveal its content. If it doesn't open automatically, simply click the virtual optical disk drive. Then click Setup to begin the installation. Again, we encounter User Account Control, and again we select Yes to confirm our intent. The Windows logo appears, and again we have closed the File Explorer window to concentrate purely upon our installer. We can click Next to proceed here, although we detour via this link, purely to show that there is an option as to whether or not updates are downloaded from the internet to supplement the bulk of the installation from the virtual disk. We choose to include updates in our installation. As instructed, the installer checks for updates before checking the PC. We are again obliged to accept the license terms, as the installation will not proceed without acceptance. Any updates are then downloaded, although again our virtual disk has much of the data required, and any download via this route will be much lighter than the previous method. We are now ready to install, and again it's time to save any open documents in order to prevent data loss. Clicking install here exits the desktop, and we now begin the lengthy installation phase. Once again we can take a break as progress continues unattended. Once completed, the machine restarts, and following restart, a final phase of working on updates commences. We are now in familiar territory, and we log in before being met with the usual time-filling text. We are teased when almost there, and we're in, with just the welcome page to clear. If you're still having difficulties installing, it might be time for a clean installation. We've created a tutorial dedicated to the clean installation of the May 2019 version of Windows 10. You may also want to check out our other videos on the May update, and on Windows installation more generally. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If you can provide a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more, you are very welcome to subscribe to the Tech Fix Flicks YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Subscription is of course entirely free and provides easy access to all of the videos posted here. Clicking on the neighbouring bell icon means you will be notified whenever a new video is posted. You can also keep in touch by following the official Tech Fix Flicks Twitter account. Until your next Tech Fix, goodbye.